We're here at uh, Quadra Manufacturing in White Pigeon, uh, Michigan, at the uh, plant that makes the Bigfoot uh, leveling systems. We're here today to uh, have a set of uh, hydraulic lifters put in our Class C motorhome. Now well, there's our RV. Uh, so they're just finishing up on it right now. Well, after owning our RV for about a year, one of the things that we really got tired of really quickly was unlevel ground and having to carry along a bunch of 2x12s to drive up on to level the coach. So recently, uh, we had an aftermarket company called Quadra Systems with their uh, product called Bigfoot Hydraulic Leveling, and we had a set of hydraulic levelers put on the RV. And I bought the manual system, which comes with a wireless remote. And the reason I went with manual versus automatic is the price is a little cheaper, which wasn't really the big reason, although it's around $800 cheaper for the manual system. But the main thing is I like the idea about how it used the hydraulic uh, cylinders and pairs to raise and lower the coach which in my view will keep the frame from being stressed. Their automatic system uses individual pumps for each hydraulic cylinder, so they must be doing some kind of electronic method to keep the frame from being stretched. I end up liking the manual system better just simply because the hydraulic cylinders are connected in pairs hydraulically through valves, so then the cylinders are kept in equilibrium due to hydraulic pressure. So to start this, basically what you do is you wake it up by depressing the on off button and then I will hit front and then extend and you can hear them extending. Now as you see them extend you'll watch this first one touch the ground before the other one will and now that one touches the ground and the coach really doesn't raise up until they're both on the ground, which means that it's going to keep everything sort of in equilibrium. Now when those are done, once they touch the ground, the manufacturer recommends lowering the rear jacks. Uh, so I'll do that now. Um, what I basically do is just hit rear and then extend. And you do that until, you get to the picture of the rear ones here, you do that until the rear ones also reach equilibrium. And now once everything's in equilibrium, all four jacks are touching the ground, then we can uh, level the coach from uh, front to back and side to side. Of course, since this is not an automatic system, we're going to have to manually raise and lower the system while looking at a um, level that should be about right right there and I'm going to tilt it over a little bit to the driver's side there I go and then I'll go inside and fine tune it with the level well, I'm leveling the coach with this uh, Camco leveler which actually works surprisingly quite well so what this shows me is that the driver's side is a little bit low so I'm going to retract the passenger side just a bit. There we go. And then I got to raise the front just a bit. It does take a few seconds to, you know, figure out which side you got to raise and lower and also when you raise one side it might compensate by lowering the other side so you may have to do a little bit of finagling but you know it's okay it works out good and in the front cab there is a warning jack down switch and buzzer so that if you turn the ignition switch on with the jacks down you'll get a warning not to drive off now one issue that i have with this installation is that the uh, transmitter doesn't seem to have a lot of range uh, what you're looking at here is the antenna for the receiver and the receiver itself is stuck underneath the driver's seat. Now I can access it anywhere inside the coach, no problem. 
and as well I can access it just about anywhere on the outside in the front of the van however going into the rear of the van um, behind it there it usually doesn't work and then along the sides there is a dead spot here and there uh, I did talk to the engineer that designed the system and he suggested that since this operates at 433 megahertz that's a 13 inch um, antenna length for a half wave antenna so he suggested using uh, another piece of wire and extend that antenna in 13 inch increments so what I think I may do is either run 26 inches up the inside of the chair or possibly on the side of the of the coach to be fair they normally attach the receiver to the sidewall but they can't on this coach because this sidewall moves out because it's part of the slide out so it's just a little bit of a you know individual uh, coach issue another issue that I have is the control box is under the chassis and right there is a toggle switch that's the emergency up switch and I don't like where it's located I would have preferred that they would have located it in the cab somewhere or at least somewhere that's more accessible so if uh, the transmitter goes out or if I lose it the emergency all up switch is underneath the coach so you know in itself it's not a bad thing but I prefer uh, not to have it that way, so I may end up moving that, or at least paralleling it, into the inside somewhere. See here that the slope is enough that the front wheels are actually off the ground. And this is pretty much the maximum uh, travel of the front. Another minor issue is the breaker. Uh, they've located the breaker kind of underneath everything. And again, the breaker is waterproof, but I would much prefer to have a breaker that you can shut off. This one is an automatic reconnect. So if we had an automatic shut off one, I could, at storage time, shut the uh, power off the batteries. But now, this thing is always draining the batteries. Of course, the uh, drain is very minimal. It's only a few milliamps, which is probably actually less than what the self-discharge is. So discharging the battery is probably not a big issue, but and in the best practice, I would just like to be able to shut it off. So again, a minor thing, and it's something that I may work on changing uh, here down the road. As it is with all of my RV projects, I have a web page where I expand on some of the information that you can find. Uh, here's uh, my website, www.rv-project.com. And if you go through here, you can find tons of projects uh, under the project section, pairs, campground cooking, destinations, gear, tips, and so on. So it's a good resource as a companion to the videos if you really want to get some uh, more information